I'm Akiko Fujita here on the ground in Las Vegas for CES 2024, where the focus has been, no surprise, artificial intelligence. I'm now joined by Dr. Dmitry Kutnesov, who is a Department of Homeland Security Undersecretary for Science and Technology, talking about the risks, how you think about the risks from a Homeland Security perspective when it comes to AI. The proliferation of this technology, particularly Gen I, has been so incredible the last year or so. Oh yeah. How has that shifted the way you think about the risks that are out there for Homeland oh, it Security? It changes a lot. And it's not just AI, it's that the suite of emerging technologies are like engineering platforms. They all talk to each other, almost like you know Legos. You can piece together some, some gene editing with some big data, with some AI and, and some uh, manufacturing. And, and you can compose things that have never been done before in smarter ways. And, and the ability to use machine learning or AI to kind of fuse and create novel things brings with it the downside because it's a democratized technology Many people have access to it. What are we going to face as these things become more prolific, uh, more ubiquitous? And uh, so with, with AI, I think about the adversarial side, all the ways you can fool uh, a system that is smarter. When you talk about the downside, what is that as you see it? Well, you know, already for some years, people have, uh, have shown you could stand in front of a facial recognition system and be invisible, I could be you, uh, or, or anyone else, you, you can fool it. In cyber attacks, we, we've kind of grown up over the decades, we have an ecosystem, we, we know what to look for. Someone is trying to inject a rogue instruction into your system. They have to penetrate it, they have to put something there to have it do something. AI attacks, you don't have to touch a system. If you understand things about it, you can get around it. And, and so the nature of AI attacks uh, already is, is quite distinct and the thinking you need is different. And we're gonna have those moments like, oh, I didn't think that could happen. And there's going to be a lot of that. Department of Homeland Security, obviously not just looking at domestic risks, you're looking at this from a global perspective as we see AI really take hold. Yeah. When you look globally, what are the big hotspots? What are the key concerns? The kinds of challenges, you know, again, thinking about AI, you mentioned generative AI. Uh, uh, AI threats uh, that are global include some of the transnational uh, criminal organizations that that work uh, to, uh, for example, uh, draw, uh, draw immigrants through Panama up uh, through Central America. There's a lot of interesting uh, disinformation. You know, you'll get Disneyland tickets, we'll take care of you please go this way. It is a business model for people. And the, the way you reach out and inform them about, the, hey, here's a great opportunity, uh, is, is getting smarter, more targeted in native languages. Uh, there, there's a transnational repression, how uh, foreign countries can target uh, certain populations here or elsewhere and, 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 and kind of uh, repress them in different ways. And generative AI is, is an enabler of things like that. There's kind of a global side to it. Are there particular countries, particular regions that really keep you up? I think the fact that anyone can do this yeah. is, is part of the challenge. It is, it is very enabling today. You know, you just have to walk around this show, which is, you know, uh, CES is really the uh, probably the premier global technology showcase. Everything here is smarter everything's being reinvented and with that will come new functionality new threats new issues open to anybody you know it's it's a very democratized space I mean you talk about just walking the floor here at CES I mean you could argue every company <laughs> operating in some way with AI technology what's been the conversation for you the takeaway from the conference as you talk to these private companies you're in the public sector yeah. you're trying to get ahead of the threat what are you, what's been the discussion for you? Well, part of it is we have a lot of boutique needs. Uh, we, we don't buy huge numbers of things, just the nature. You know, if it's for secret service, it might be onesies or twosies for certain kinds of protection details. If it's for airports or borders, uh, you know, it's hundreds, maybe thousands. It isn't driven by a huge market cap. And, and so the things we need often are offshoots of, of main commercial paths 
the companies are doing. And, and often we need piece parts of innovation from, from different companies. And, and how do you blend IP or, or work together to create something where you protect IP in the right way and incentivize? So working with us beyond transactional is really important. We have important things that we have to do that impact really everyone uh, in, in the U.S. And, and the question is, how do we generate the best from such a vibrant, you know, ecosystem? You you released um, what's essentially a roadmap for preparedness, yeah. AI preparedness. A as you look at what the Department of Homeland Security needs to do to tackle this, where do you see the biggest holes right now? It's not so much holes, it's that I, 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 I certainly personally believe that the world of tomorrow is is a bit non-linear with respect to today. <coughs> Excuse me. The world of tomorrow is going to be different and, and that the risk models we have today may not scale to what we worry about tomorrow. When you leave here, you'll go through uh, Las Vegas International. You'll go through our checkpoints. You know. How do you rethink that in the view of a, a smart, changing world? And what, what are the risks that are coming tomorrow beyond it's you and it's in your bag, you know? And if it's not that, then it's nothing else, you know? And, and so if it's on our list of things that it could be, then that's what we worry about. And if it's not, then we're okay. You know, how do we get beyond that model? You know, we have smart systems. You go up here to the Innovation Award uh, uh, area, everything's being reinvented. There isn't anything you can point to that isn't being rethought. We could do with some of that as we think about uh, our use cases. And, and while so much of the focus has been about the risks of AI, I imagine you're probably looking at this from twofold. You want to be after the risk, be ahead of it, but at the same time, AI can be a huge tool for you in tackling some of these risks. How yeah. are you thinking about that? What does that look like? Uh, so it's, it's a big force multiplier. So. DHS has about 260,000 people, mostly law enforcement, uh, responding to uh, many kinds of, of threats. And, and so um, what we need are, are solutions that go beyond we have to hire more people. And there are places where we've seen this. So for example, we work in, in, in war crimes to make sure people don't you know, get on no-fly lists and don't come to this country. You have to view incredibly toxic images and information. We do child sexual exploitation, uh, dark web streaming content, crypto, things that are air gapped, piecing together uh, these kinds of networks. We, we've had this year a 50x improvement in the ability to make leads. Uh, because it, of AI. Because of AI, because we can understand content, the environment, the networks, the fabric of these, uh, uh, you know, criminal uh, networks that, that traffic in children, uh, and it's led to this year uh, freeing children, uh, rescuing. It's led to arrests, led to convictions, and but the 50x improvement could have been met by 50x staff up. It didn't. Same people, far more effective. Uh, when we do bulk cash money laundering, trying to understand criminal organizations. What used to take three years and, and 10 experts just a couple of years ago is now just a matter of days. <clears throat> and, and so there are places where the use of smarter tools with this data is significant, but it's not a commercial product. It's fascinating to see the changes there. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the time. Thank you so much, Akiko.